All right, you guys, so in today's video, what we're gonna be going over is exactly what you wanna be doing with your finances and your money if you're very unconfident about your financial situation headed into a recession or when you find yourself like we are currently smack dab right in the middle of a recession. So what you wanna do is exactly this. So what you wanna start off doing with first and foremost, I'm assuming you have a job. Like let's, we gotta start there. Like to put this video in context, we're not talking about if you're already unemployed or you've already been let go. We're going from the standpoint like you currently have a job and for the foreseeable future, you expect to have this job. Now, obviously things can happen. You might get let go, all that, but that's exactly what this video is for. So we'll cover all that in a minute. So what you wanna do to protect yourself financially headed into a recession or when you find yourself in a recession is that you wanna make sure that first and foremost, you're cutting out all necessary like expenses and like spending whatsoever so like we're not talking about spending money on literally anything that you do not need to so first and foremost we're starting there no unnecessary spending now what do you want to do next you want to take care of your mandatory living expenses so this is like obviously the things that you need month in and month out to survive you know paycheck to paycheck each and every single month, no matter what, you need these things. So this is like your rent, your mortgage, your car payment, whatever, your insurance, food, lights, water, gas, utilities, all of that. So you're gonna take care of those things because these are mandatory things that you need to survive each and every single month. You know, basically for you to just continue to live like your lifestyle. We're not, we're not talking about things like going out to eat or going shopping or anything like that. We're just simply talking about just your bare minimum essential things for you to survive, right? Because we're trying to go and put you in a financial situation where you could withstand, you know, and write out a recession and not like, you know, basically find yourself falling flat on your face from a financial standpoint or get like just devastated during a recession. So that's what all of these steps in this video are to help you and protect yourself from a financial standpoint in a recession. So what do you want to do next after you've taken care of home and you've cut out all this unnecessary expenses all out completely? So what you want to do next is you want to say, all right, I am truly living at my income or significantly below my income because you're not spending anything that you don't need to be spending. And ideally, if you're doing this right, you should not be spending all of your income because you're not going out. You're not having fun. You are not in that type of financial situation to be doing those things. So right now, you're just simply taking care of home paying for the things that are your mandatory living expenses. And then after that, you're gonna now look at like whatever debts you have, this is not the time for you to say, hey, I wanna you know, pay off my debts so I could have more free and clear income. This is not the time for that. You're not in that type of financial situation. What you're gonna to wanna to do when it comes to your debts is you wanna say, all right, if these are debts, so ideally you wanna to talk to like these people who you are indebted to, like if they're creditors, like from a credit card or some other type of, you know, whatever type of debt you find yourself into. And you wanna to try to talk to these creditors and ask them like, hey, is there anywhere I could put this debt on hold right now? Because, you know, I'm not in a currently like strong financial situation and maybe you could put that, you know, those debts on hold for a minute and then you could come back to them, you know, once you're in a stronger financial situation or, if they won't work with you, then simply just make the minimum payments on those debts. So then that way, you know, you don't like tear up your credit or anything like that or cause yourself to, you know, like damage your credit or damage yourself, you know, any worse financially because you don't want those debts to accumulate. That's just going to work against you. And, you know, why would we want something like that? So when it comes to your debts, don't worry about paying any additional amounts of money onto those debts. Just pay the minimum monthly payments on those debts. If those creditors won't work with you, you know, to delay or put those debts that you owe them on hold. So what do you want to do next after talking, you know, after dealing with your debts? So the next, what you want to do is say, okay, here I am living beneath my expenses. I'm just taking care of home. Now what's next? So what you're going to do is you want to look at your emergency fund and I hope all of you who are watching this video already have some type of an emergency fund, if not at least just getting started on building one. But if it's okay, if you don't, hey, at one point I didn't have an emergency fund either and I had to learn this the hard way. I had to fall flat on my face and struggle and ask people for money and things like that. And they got I learned it and now I do have my emergency fund in place. So what you wanna do next is you wanna start or continue to add to your emergency fund until you at the very, at the very minimum you wanna have three months of your mandatory living expenses. Ideally, you would like to have more, but just so that way you don't spend too much time on this, 
you basically want to say, okay, whatever your mandatory monthly living expenses are, like, let's just go with like a simple case of like your mandatory living expenses are $3,000 a month. So once you've paid all your mandatory living expenses, it equals up to $3,000 a month. So then you would say, all right, I need to put three months of those mandatory living expenses to the side in some type of savings account or wherever it is that you want to store it. But ideally it would be like something like, you know, whatever bank that you bank with, you would create like a separate, you know, bank account there, keep that money there, or maybe like a, at a different bank. So it make it a little harder for you to tap into those funds. Cause the idea is not to spend that on, you know, whenever something looks cool and you want to buy it, like you want to make it a little more difficult for you to access those funds. So that way it actually has to be a scenario that is an emergency, like a financial emergency. And then you've got to go access those funds when you need them. So, that's what you want to do next you want to start either creating an emergency fund and working on building up to that you know three to six months or even possibly more of an emergency fund so then that way let's say something happens your job lets you go you know you find yourself on tough times maybe they cut your hours whatever happens you might get you know a job demotion whatever happens but somehow your income gets impacted and you have income to fall back on and you don't like fall flat on your face or get you know financially destroyed when they let you go you know with very short notice or no notice whatsoever so that way you're able to protect yourself in the time that you are earning income and you'll be able to ride out these rough times you know during a recession because hey the truth is like during recessionary type periods of time this is when companies look for hey how could we cut back lower our expenses and you know continue to either grow our company or just ride and you know ride out these rough times so that's what you want to do you want to say all right let me go ahead start protecting myself from a financial standpoint by creating an emergency fund for myself try to ideally get three to six months and once you've done that the next thing you want to do is you start wanting to say okay well the job that i have right now the chances are like there's room for you to improve your skill set in that particular job field or what you want to do so then ideally like you would like the whole purpose behind that is because Typically, if you move up, you make more money, right? So you either want to ultimately like that's the goal. The next step that you want to do is make more money because the more money that you can make is like you're only going to be in a stronger financial position. You're going to have more money to work with. You're earning more money. Your expenses are low. It puts you in a stronger financial position. And that's what we want to see you in. Low expenses, higher income, more free and clear money, more peace of mind, right? So that's what, ideally what you want to do is you want to start looking at like what is it going to take for you to do? To start earning more money i mean for some people that might be like hey you want to go the route of like all right i'm just going to try to work more or i'm going to volunteer and see like hey if i could work more pick up some extra hours make some more money and then ideally you're not going to go out there and spend that money you're going to save that money you know you're going to build up even more of a reserve of cash because you don't know you know what's going to happen to your job like they might let you go the following week or the next month or you know in six months so you're in the like stage where you're looking to preserve as much income and cash as you possibly can you're stockpiling cash at this point so what you're trying to do is like look like how can i make more money how can i get more income so like i said some people might look at like all right i'm going to work more hours to you know get more income or maybe if you can't work more hours you might say hey i'm going to find me like a side hustle to do or you know you might do something like you know drive uber drive lyft or you know deliver food you know doing like the food delivery services something like that or you know selling something online whatever it is you want to find some additional way to earn extra income and if you don't want to do any of those ways the next best advice that i could give you would be something like saying okay let me invest in myself and in my skill set so then that way you could like raise and increase your skill set in the marketplace so you could have a very high, like a very high level skill set that is very high in demand and will ideally always be in demand so then that way when companies are looking at letting go of people they really don't want to let you go because your skill set is a very like high and in demand type of skill set and not very easy to replace because i mean okay like nothing against like cashiers or nothing against like you know someone who bags groceries but i mean the truth is like you can let any one of those people go and then whenever you need some more, you could just say, hey, let me show you how to buy groceries. Let me show you how to be a cashier. And it's like your skill set is basically so low that, you know, they're very replaceable. And I mean, come on, like you see the reality is like now they have self checkout, things like that. So it's like that kind of tells you the direction, you know, companies are going with this. So this is why it's so important. You want to make yourself as valuable as possible when it comes to your skill set, you know, in the financial world and in the marketplace, because the higher your skill set, the more you're like, 
the more your skills are going to be in demand, and it also is going to mean that you're going to earn a higher income and be harder and harder for companies to replace you. And that's the position you want to be in. You want to be in a position of strength, not a position of weakness. And when companies, like I said, are looking at cutting back and things like that, they're really not going to be looking at you. And even if some company does let you go, maybe they just simply can't afford to keep you. But some other company will go ahead and take you on because they're like, hey, that skill set, we really need that, you know, that position. We need to go ahead and bring them on so we can like, you know, our company can continue to do well so hey now you guys know exactly what to do with your finances and what type of actions and decisions and choices you need to make for yourself so then that way if you see like that you're headed into a recession or you are like we are smack dab in the middle of a recession and you want to you're worried about the financial situation that you're in and you want to be able to ride out a recession and not have it just devastate you from a financial standpoint so now you know hey these are the things that i should do with my money and with my time so I can make sure that I come out on the other end of a recession without being devastated. So hey, if you guys are interested in starting you know, investing, and I only want you guys to look at investing if you know that you're already in a strong financial situation and you're ready to start growing your wealth and building wealth for yourself, but in case you guys are ready to take that next step and start investing into the stock market to build wealth for yourself, well then I'm gonna put a link to the investing platform M1 Finance down in both the pinned comment in the comment section below as well as in the description box below. So I will put the link to the investing platform M1 Finance. It's a really great investing platform. It allows you to invest into the stock market. Very easy to sign up. You know, a few answers, like a few questions answered, boom, your account's gonna be approved. You just deposit your money and start investing into the stock market and start building your wealth. I use M1 Finance. This is why I'm recommending it out to you guys. Let me know what you guys think about the video, what you guys think about, you know, what other ideas or suggestions you guys have about like, you know, being able to, to recession proof your finances. Drop those comments and opinions down in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to, you know, look right here on the bottom right side of your screen, tap that red subscribe button. So that way you'll be notified by YouTube each and every time I upload a video. And with that being said, I know that you guys have made it to this part of the video because obviously you're still watching. So if you'd like to watch another video, click this video that pops up here on the screen and YouTube is going to show you the very best video for you guys from my channel. And I will catch you in that next video.